Hello there, Alberto Savoia here, the Alpha Product Manager, where I teach you how to become an Alpha Product Manager and win the product management game consistently. And in this lesson, lesson 12, kind of a freebie for me, I answered the question that I actually posed on LinkedIn a few days ago and I got a lot of replies, so over 100 comments and you know the surveys, I don't know, a couple of hundred people replied. And the question is, how do you choose the optimal uh, sample size for testing your market hypothesis? Because you know, we know it's important to test your hypothesis, but how many people do you need to test you know, before you realize that your product is a go or a, or a, a no go? And by optimal market size here, I mean something very specifically. Uh, it's a size, a sample size that has to satisfy two criteria. First of all, it must be statistically significant, meaning that if you show it to somebody that has a background in statistics and uh, probabilities, they will not run away screaming and tear out their, their hair. And number two, it must be practical, something that you can actually execute. Yes, so ideally you ask 10,000 people, but you usually don't have that luxury of the time to do that. So that's what I mean by optimal. So how do we find the optimal? Uh, sample size, as always, start with the XYZ hypothesis. That's what I teach. And if you're not familiar with the XYZ hypothesis, quit this video, go watch my videos on the XYZ hypothesis because it's the most important thing that you can do. It's like, it's a business case, a business plan, a business uh, model in a single uh, uh, assertion. So remember the format of the XYZ hypothesis is at least X percent of Y will do Z, where Y is your target uh, market. Z is what you expect or hope your target market to do, you know, buy your, your product or sign up for your service. And X percent is the amount, the, the percentage of that target market that you need to capture in order for your idea to be viable, to be worth uh, pursuing. As always, an example is <laughs> explain this, explains this very, very clearly. Uh, let's assume that you've come up with a new widget, call it my new widget, and you come up with this hypothesis, at least 5% uh, of uh, widget buyers will buy my new widget for $20. Uh, so remember, I, we, we discussed in another lesson how you, to come up with that 5%, but the short version is that's the amount of that you need to buy in order of people you need to buy in order for your idea, your idea to be worth pursuing. It's like one person in a million buys it, it's not worth pursuing. So now you start with the XYZ hypothesis and here you see yet another example of the power of having an XYZ hypothesis because the X from the XYZ hypothesis becomes the, the number that you use to calculate your optimal sample size. And the way you calculate your optimal sample size, no complicated formula with sigma and square root that scare off most of you. I happen to love them, but you know, most people don't want to deal with that. So what we do is you take the number 1000, that doesn't change, doesn't matter what your product is, and then you divide it by X and where does that X comes from is the X in the XYZ hypothesis. All right, so that's the formula that you need uh, to remember. Let's, let's put it into, into action. Let's go back to our XYZ hypothesis. At least 5% of uh, widget buyers will buy my new widget for $20. And so your optimal sample size, you take 1000, you divide it by what? You divide it by five, the X in X percent. And what do you get? 200. I know you don't like to do a lot of math, but you can do this division, right? If not, use your calculator. Uh, so that tells you that if you expect about 5% of people to buy your product, or if you need 5% of people to buy your product for it to be viable, then you need to do your, your experiment, your market experiments with the prototypes using uh, uh, you know, 200 people, give or take. And if you do that, you will have a statistically significant and practical um, experiment. Now, let's look at it how this uh, your sample size varies depending on what your X percent uh, is. So I've created the table for you uh, here. So if your X percent is 0.1, say you have a very, very exclusive product, which very few people will buy, uh, then uh, you have a very small um, X percent. Let's, a good example of this is Rolls-Royce. Say maybe Rolls-Royce is planning to launch an SUV and their hypothesis, uh, XYZ hypothesis, at least 0.1% of multimillionaire will buy a Rolls Royce uh, SUV. In that case, uh, even though your market is not gigantic, there aren't, I mean, th there's a lot of multimillionaire, but it's, you know, it's a small percentage of, of the world. You still need to have a very large sample size, like 10,000. Why? Because if you, if you, go to, if you need a thousand people, 
right? That's what 0.1% means to buy your product. You need to reach a lot of people to have something significant uh, uh, there. So the smaller your X percent, uh, the bigger your sample size that you need to use. So let's jump uh, a couple here. So let's say that your X percent is 1%. 1% of people who will buy widgets will buy my widget. What is your optimal sample size for experiment? Well, in this case, take 1,000 divided by 1. You get 1,000. You don't even need a calculator here, right? Which means that you, you need to do experiments with about 1,000 people. Why? Because 1% of the population is not a lot. So, you know, uh, you know, you probably you need to go to a, 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 an average of 100 people before you get one buyer. And getting one buyer is not enough. So 1,000 uh, is the number that you get. So you see, as the X percent increases, then the sample size that you need uh, decreases. If you get to the 10% category, your sample size will be 1,000 divided by 10, which is 100. So if one, every person out of 10, you expect them to buy your, your widget, you can ask 100 person. And if your hypothesis is old, you will have you know, about 10 people, give or take a couple, that, have, that will actually buy uh, your product. Let's go to the final case, an extreme case here, say 50%, as if, right? This very, very rarely happens, at least for new product. Uh, so if you say, if at least 50% if of people who buy widgets will buy my new widget, then you can afford to have a very, very small sample size because expect every other person that you ask to buy it. So you can validate that hypothesis uh, very quickly. By the way, if you already have an established product and you're planning to make a change to the feature, so let's say that you're on Netflix and said, well, uh, at least 50% of current Netflix subscribers will pay an extra $2 uh, to be able to share their account with their family, right? So this is a very plausible hypothesis, and you don't need to launch it and you know test it on a lot of people because 50% is a very big number. Pick a random sample of your existing Netflix customers, and you will be able to get that. So I hope this makes it uh, clear. Remember, it's important to say with numbers, but you cannot pull those numbers out of your you know nether regions. You need to be able uh, to calculate it. So, and the calculation I'm giving you is very, very simple, as I sh show again in this slide. Take the number 1,000 divided by x in your uh, uh, XYZ hypothesis, and bang, you have your optimal sample size. You're doing math, but very, very little um, math. And again, you see the power of the XYZ hypothesis. I always like to leave you uh, in this lesson with a, a bonus aphorism, one of my favorite uh, expressions. And this is one that I've come up with uh, recently. And maybe I'm not the first to have come up with it, but I loved it. The, mo the moment I said it to somebody, I thought, okay, this I gotta, I have to make it part of my curriculum. And that is, you cannot say that you've taken a calculated decision unless you have made some calculations. And guess what? Today I taught you how to make some calculation, very easy calculation. You just divide two numbers to come up with a statistically significant and yet very practical sample size for your experiments. I hope this is useful. If you like this, sign up. I don't know where you're watching this on YouTube, on LinkedIn or, or Twitter. Sign up and follow me and I will make an alpha product manager out of uh, you. Thanks again. I hope you enjoyed the lesson and I hope that you use it, this formula. Bye-bye.